up guys and welcome back to another one. Oh yeah, check it out. It's bright out here. We got a lot more snow. Yeah, we got another like three or four inches of snow. It's crazy. It's been years since we've had this much snow in Kansas. I'm telling you. But today I want to do something different. And what I mean by different, I, like you can tell by the thumbnail and title, different. No decoy challenge. And my, here's my theory. One of two things will happen if this little hunt goes correctly and that is either one a ton of birds are going to get off some water a little pond that we're going to be butt up, butted up to and they're going to get off they're going to come right over a tree root and they're going to sit down right in front of us that's a or we're going to be able to just pop shoot some birds as they circle over top of us what i'm talking about guys is pass shooting and that's what we're going to try to do today we're going to try to pass shoot some birds i haven't pass shooted for a long time i haven't not used decoys in a long time I'm hoping that these birds just get off this water, literally come over the trees and just sit down in front of us so we can actually kill quite a bit of these snow geese. Because I'm telling you, this little pond is jacked. I mean loaded with adult snow geese. But before we get on the road real quick, I want to show you the new Ducks shirt of the month. Check that bad boy out right there. Oh yeah. It's one of my favorites, and I can tell you, if you don't have the shirt of the month yet, if you're not subscribed to it, you need to. It's a heck of a deal. It's discounted Ducks t-shirts that get sent directly to your mailbox one a month, and every shirt that you receive is a one-off shirt. No one else gets them except for the shirt of the month subscribers. So I will link the shirt of the month down in the description below. Go sign up for it if you want to. It's a heck of a deal. You get one-off custom t-shirts for an awesome discounted price. Oh, well, on the road here, and it's still cold out. This is the warmest day we've had probably in, I don't know, five, six days. Right now it's 32 degrees out, which is extremely warm for what it has been. I'll tell you, it has been extremely, extremely chilly. Your boy's been sick, as you can hear it. Yeah, I'm just going, uh, yeah, I'm all gargly, all nasally. I have had crazy, crazy sinus issues. And so it's kept me in the house for about three days solid. Ah, oh, there's a train, we gotta go this way. It's kept me inside for about three days solid, and I'll tell you what, it's not fun. It's not fun staying inside when you got snow geese all around you, flying, laughing at you for being sick, you know. But it's 2.47 in the afternoon here. Um, we're going to give it a whirl. I don't know how this is going to go, to be quite honest with you. I'm just giving it a big O send, a big cinderoni. Uh, like I said, I have no idea how this is going to go. A lot of you guys, I've been asking you, give me your two cents. What do you guys want to see me do? What type of videos do you want? And I've had a ton of comments saying, Bobby, please do the no decoy challenge. So, you know, there's a couple ways you can do a no decoy challenge. One way is to just go jump shoot snow geese, which I'm not a big advocate on that. I'm not, I'm not a big, big jump shooting guy. I mean, I don't mind doing it at the very end of snow goose season when you haven't shot anything else. But I don't like busting roosts uh, when we're trying to hunt these birds. So, and it's, it is a little unethical just completely jump shooting birds because accidents can happen, guys. Accidents can happen very easily. So, uh, I do not um, recommend jump shooting birds. Literally jump shooting a lot of birds that are sitting on water. Don't do that. You don't. You don't know what's in there. You know, yeah. unless you're extremely certain that it's just snow geese, you never know what's in there. So again, not gonna jump shoot today. We're gonna try some pass shooting though. Pass shooting is the same thing as if birds were flying over your decoys. They're getting off a body of water. These birds are in a very, very cold weather rhythm. And what I mean by that is they're roosting on small bodies of water. The smaller the better because it's easier for them to condense those smaller bodies of water to keep them open so they don't freeze. So what they do is they keep it open by taking turns sitting on it, roosting on it during the daytime. And so they'll just rotate. A group will go to feed, a group will come back to sit on the water. A group will go to feed, a group come back to sit on the water. And that's what happens. And in those circumstances, it makes for great pass shooting. Now, one thing I'm worried about if this does work out is if I shoot one time the first shot, they should all be off that water and probably gone. So this might be a one shot, uh, one shot in the dark type of opportunity. And one more thing before we get to the field, uh, I think it's funny when I go back to edit my videos and 
just like this video here we're starting it at two three o'clock in the afternoon you know and I compare the energy to my afternoon videos compared to my morning hunts my morning videos that I do those mornings guys I'm sorry if I'm groggy and I'm tired and I'm not alert and energized like I am right now but I'm sure you guys understand when you're up at three and four and five in the morning you're tired I'm a tired boy in the afternoon, I'm energized, I'm ready to go, I got my energy drink in me. <sighs> Let's see if this, I, I'm really hoping this works today, guys. Oh, well here they are, I'm on the side of the road looking at them and they're all in the field. Look at all them birds. Goodness gracious. Whew, that's a bunch. That's a big bunch. So, my theory, <sighs> I was hoping they're all on the water because I can sit right next to the water and I was gonna wait till they got off the water and I was gonna have a very good opportunity to shoot at them uh, but man they are all in the field there's literally probably two to three thousand in the field right there so uh, it's only about I don't know uh, 500 yards here we are right here I'll show you guys as we're going by <clears throat> So this is the little body of water that they're staying on and as you can tell that far end over there is still iced over and they've been keeping all that open. And then I'll show you the whole setup here. There's the pond, here's the tree row, and that's where I want to sit on the end of that tree row over there. So I was wanting to sit over, I don't know, somewhere right there in the tree row on this side because on the other side there's that pond. Yesterday they were actually feeding and landing in these tall milo stalks and I was actually wanting to hunt right over there, right on, on that hill right there. I was actually thinking about hunting it today, but uh, I'm still sick so I didn't want to get out and risk it. But now that it's the afternoon I feel like doing something and they're all in the field. That's not good. So this is my dilemma. It's right at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. They've been in the field all day, I can guarantee it. I'm just wondering when they're going to all jump up and bump back to water one more time. It's three, so they may not. They might just stay in the field up until six, seven o'clock until they all come back to water. Hmm, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? What do you guys think is the best option right now? Just get out there, sit down and send it and wait for three hours. Maybe could be up to three hours or wait in the truck for a while until I start seeing see him to get up what do you think I should do drop a comment down below you know I need your guys help on a lot of these things and bad news is I'm not gonna be able to read these comments up until it's uploaded uh, sometimes I really don't know which way is left and right when I'm doing these videos y'all I'm telling you I just wing it most of the time just gonna just gonna wing it Holy smokes, look how many birds this is, boys and gals. This is insane. That is so cool. How do you mimic a feed like that? Tell me how you mimic a feed like that. Wow. Just sitting here watching these birds feed comfortable this close to the truck is just insane. I get to really look at them. Crazy. Look how close they are right here. Insane, man. A lot of juvies in there. This is kind of the most juvies I've seen in one feed. So, I've been trying to get on that wheat field. Uh, that's actually a wheat field. It's covered in a lot of snow, but as you can see, with them being on it as much as they have the past few days, they've really uh, melted the snow off the top. And uh, if you guys throughout Kansas or Oklahoma, Texas, anywhere that has snow geese and birds right now, these Arctic temperatures, if any of you are wondering, 
why these geese uh, feed out in fields all day. So I don't know if we're going to end up uh, making this video work on the no decoy challenge. So I want to make sure that I give you guys some information because a lot of you have been requesting, hey Bobby, don't stop the how-to videos, the beginner videos. Uh, I really love them. So we're going to keep those going here because I don't know if we're going to end up trying to shoot these birds or not because I really do want to get on that field. Uh, and I will know if I'll get on the field here in a little bit. And if I don't get on it, we're going to go sit by that darn tree row here in just a bit. But when it's brutally cold, which it's actually warmer now, but we've been in the single digits for days. And the nights, oh, look at this, same thing. Check it out, another feed. Check this one out. Way bigger field. And they are tight out there. There's a lot more Canada's in this one. Goodness, that's a lot of birds. So I'm sure a lot of you are experiencing the same thing. You're watching a lot of birds stay out in the field all day long. And it's it, they're going to do that when it's, when it's cold like this. A lot of times you see them out there uh, earlier in the season when it's cloudy. Whoa, look at this. Look at this. Just found a dead snow goose on the road. Check this out. Oh, look at this though. Look at this real quick. Look at how close those birds are to that tree row. It's a north wind and the wind is actually coming this way so they are tucked up against that tree row hard. Look at that. Wow. Holy smokes. Oh, this is the first dead bird I've found. Check this out. This is neat. Look at this guy. He's got a rusty face too. A rusty old face. When their face is rusty like that, yellow, this is actually rust on his face from the Arkansas rice fields. Look at this guy. He's been sitting here for just a minute. See if he's banded. No band. Pretty adult bird though. Check him out. <laughs> well, that's cool. Doesn't look like he was hit or anything. He's got a little blood on his wing, huh? Yeah, but I know a lot of you, uh, a lot of you have asked me on Instagram and stuff. You're like, what's that yellow stuff on their face? And like I said, that is rust from uh, usually going to be from Arkansas. There are rice fields in Texas and stuff, but Arkansas, there's a lot of rice fields. And oh man, it's cold and windy. Sorry if the audio was blown out, but they spread iron on the rice fields. Now, for whatever reason, I don't know. I'm not a big farm guy. I used to farm. But Dev, is that another dead snow goose? What in the world? I'll be darned. Look at this. Look at that. Better check him out. What in the actual heck is going on? This guy has been ate up probably by a hawk. It's a little Rossi. Check him out. You banded, bud? Nope, no band. Look at that though, he got eaten up. I'm assuming a hawk got a hold of that guy. Yikes. This is the most dead birds I've ever seen in my life on the road. What in the world? Now a lot of you that scout snow geese, uh, a lot of times on snow goose feeds you'll see eagles and hawks circling and they'll try to find a wounded bird, you know, for lunch or whatever, but to find two snow geese, one of them, the one adult, I, I have them in the back of my truck now, uh, he has a little bit of blood underneath his wing, um, but the other one looks like he was chomped on by a bird for a while. That's baffling though. I've never, I hardly ever find dead birds on the road around here. I mean, hardly ever. And that's just, that's a big feed and they've been there for a while. So I can see maybe, I don't know. The one looks like he might've been shot underneath his wing. So I don't know. Do you guys find a lot of dead snow geese uh, in this type of circumstance? Drop me a comment down below and why do you why do you guys think that uh, literally it was in within 30 yards of each other on the side of the road? I'm going to go back and I'm going to look again, see if there's any more around here because that's interesting. If you guys have any idea why these birds are dead on the side of the road and two of them already, that's odd. Drop a comment down below and let me know. Well, uh, here's this other feed here yet again. and. Look how close they are to the road right there. I mean, they're literally right up against the ditch. <clears throat> now, um, this dirt road here, this other feed, uh, the ditch is a lot more shallower and it's a dirt road. That's a paved road, so I don't know. Maybe they, maybe they got hit. 
maybe they're on the road like they do. I, on a couple videos ago, I actually filmed uh, snow geese on the road, so maybe they got hit. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to finish my, my thought that I had, I don't know, probably a couple minutes ago before I got rudely interrupted by the dead snow goose on the road. Uh, before we get back over there and look for some more dead ones, uh, but it's cold out. The, the, the wheat fields are going to be their primary feed here in Kansas, especially when there's snow on the ground. Uh, it's easy plucking. They can just pluck it right out of the ground. When, when, you're talking about, when you're talking about cut bean fields, cut corn fields when there's snow on the top, the seeds are actually going to be, the kernels, the beans, the, the corn, is actually going to be frozen into the soil. It's going to be capped over with ice. So when they go to peck it and eat it, they're not going to be able to get it out of the ground. Wheat fields give the birds that opportunity when it's this cold and there's ice over the top or there's snow over the top. They can melt it down a little bit and they can find that feed and pluck it right off the top of the snow. So, that's my theory of why uh, you see snow geese and geese in general, when it's very cold, they'll stay out all day and they will sit, and I mean sit on their butts, on wheat fields. It's always wheat fields right now. All week long it's been, it's been nothing but wheat fields. Oh, I'll be darned. Here's another one. Look at this. Look at this guy. He's got a little bit of juvie action to him. Ooh, he's a lot more stiff. He's got some blood on his neck. I'm wondering if these birds got hit on the road. That's three. There's a Rossi that's down there. He's nasty. He's been pecked and eaten by a hawk, it looks like. But uh, he's frozen cold. This one here, this one just died recently. I can tell. Like, he is, uh, he's warm. He's not frozen stiff at all, and if he had been sitting there for a while, he would be frozen stiff. I don't know, this is weird. It's weird. Whew. It's getting chilly though. The, the temperature is already dropping. It's 25 degrees out, and it's 340. It's literally been 40 minutes since we started filming. It's already dropped almost 10 degrees. Three snow geese, three dead snow geese, in the matter of, I don't know, probably 300 yards right on the edge of the road. We gotta think that birds die of a lot of natural causes. And right now with this cold, there's been a lot of birds that's been flooding into Kansas and this cold with them being pinned in the fields, I don't know, maybe they're just old and, and, the, and the cold got to them, they starved. I really don't know, but uh, we do gotta keep into consideration as hunters, uh, these, these waterfowl, snow geese, Canada's ducks, anything, they all don't die because we shoot them. They die from natural causes and AIDS and AIDS, AIDS, age, <laughs> their age. They die of old age. They die of, of natural causes. So maybe that's what this is. And there's already three of them on the side of the road. I, I don't, I don't see how that would, uh, how that would be right though. I feel like they got hit or something. I don't know. That's just weird to have three right here. But going back to the natural causes thing, Maybe these, this group of birds that are, that's feeding right here, maybe they just got done flying. I mean, I don't know, maybe just far, very, very far. And uh, maybe it just took it out of a few of them. I, I, I don't know. Again, drop your comment down below and kind of let me know what your, your two cents is, what your thoughts, what your theories are about this. I wasn't expecting this. I was expecting to go out and do a no decoy challenge and uh, go rack off some uh, three inch steel out of the old Franke. But uh, hey, I guess, we, I guess we got some dead birds uh, without any decoys, if that counts. But this is, this is weird, man. Um, I find dead birds sometimes, but not three of them in just 200 yards. That's that's weird. I'm going to keep looking around, see if we can find anything else here. Well, pretty sure I just figured it out. I just figured out the reason why these birds are dead right here. So, this is, this is the ditch where I found them all. They're both on the side of the road here. And check this out. There's a lot of goose poop. I don't see any tracks, and you would think that they would leave tracks if they were walking on it. Maybe not. See, goose, there's a drop of blood but there's goose poop literally everywhere everywhere boom 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 I don't see any foot tracks so that's what's caught me stumped see and look down here a lot of goose poop down here I mean there are like there's like some tracks like 
very few, but there's just a ton of goose poop in this ditch. They had, yeah, look, look, right there. There's some tracks in the snow right there. I don't see a lot of tracks in the snow, but what I think happened is there was some geese down here in the ditch, and I believe they got hit right on the road. Someone nailed them. This kind of explains it, blood right alongside the poop and this whole ditch. Maybe there's been a lot more than just a couple in this ditch, I would think probably. I'm trying to look for more tracks, because this is interesting. I've been seeing snow geese feed on the roads. They will come up on the roads, and this is kind of uh, the aftermath of them doing that. It's kind of neat. Yeah, look at this, a lot of goose poop. It's crazy the things that you you find when you're a hunter and, and you're scouting things you find and the things you learn oh a lot of you know how hard it is to sneak up on most waterfowl they have peripheral vision they have exquisite perfect peripheral vision and uh, when you try to jump shoot them a lot of you have tried and you know how hard it is to sneak up on them they're not a predator they have peripheral vision. So, it's just baffling that they can actually allow themselves to be hit on a road. But that's what I think happened here, guys, honestly. Oh boy, look at this. Well, here's another feed for the day. Goodness, just crazy the amount of birds that are stalling up here in Kansas right now. But I hope you guys liked this video. I know we didn't squeeze a trigger. I know we didn't do any hunting, but uh, finding those snow geese on the road, that, that was different for me. I usually don't find a lot of dead birds. Usually we don't hold a lot of birds like this. So with this amount of birds, I guess anything can happen. I need you guys to drop your comments down below. Let me know what you think about those dead geese getting hit on the road. That's the best thing that I could come up with. With all the blood and all the poop in the ditch like that, it's pretty, I'm pretty sure I'm right. But remember the Ducks t-shirt of the month. I have it underneath my Ducks hoodie. But if you guys are interested in the t-shirt of the month or a Ducks hoodie or a Ducks hat, I will link all of the items down in the description below. Whenever you guys purchase something from DucksWaterfowl.com, it allows me to keep bringing you videos just like this one. But again, no decoy challenge. Yeah, we, we got some birds without decoys, but we didn't even have to shoot them. I guess that's a win-win situation, right? But again, if you guys liked the video, give me a big old thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, you need to. Because we're going to be riding out the snow goose season until she is done. And then transitioning into a lot of other fun stuff. But thanks for being here, guys. We'll see you on the next one.